Okay, so welcome to the semester and welcome to this course, ma 352 This particular session is not a proper lecture. I'm giving this primarily to discuss with you the course plan. Okay. So I will share with you a little uh, write-up, which is my course plan. And in the context, I will talk to you about the protocols, rules, and norms that I'm going to follow for the course. So, I understand that you can now see this uh, PDF. Okay. Uh, I am not sure whether you can also see my mouse, but I hope that you can see. So, you can see this mouse. I mean, this time. Okay. So, I hope that you can see the mouse. Now, the course is Theory of Machines and Mechanisms and Machines. And uh, these are the teaching assistants. And since there is a lab component in the course, an important figure for the course is also the lab staff. Okay. So, the lab staff is Mr. Tripathi, uh, who will have a bigger role this time because the course is on. And we have decided that uh, uh, most of your out of turn special. Uh, communications to the TAs and regarding assignments and other things uh, will be typically uh, taken care of through it. Okay. I mean, something that you want to communicate to uh, one TA and you don't know which is the TA, okay, or who, who is to be conduct, uh, contacted. I mean, any email contact that you may need for any administrative reason, uh, that has to be channelized uh, through Victor. Okay. He is the um, senior most among the TAs. And he has been in the system for quite some time. He knows how the system works. And he has also operated with me quite a few semesters. So he has a typical model of the operations that I typically prefer. Now, the textbook uh, for the course is uh, Theory of Mechanisms and Machines by Hoshan Malik. The name is same or similar to the uh, course name. Okay. And this uh, textbook is necessary. Okay. You must have it. And uh, I mean, either you procure it as quickly as possible through Amazon, Flipkart, or whatever, or you get it from a friend around you, or if you get rid of a, an online PDF, that is up to you. Okay. There are other extra resources, other textbooks written by other authors, but this is the primary thing, okay, which will be really working. Okay. Now, um, for that matter, uh, theoretically, uh, my online lectures uh, should not have been required at all because Professor Malik's classic lectures, full set of that, is already available in NP. But at times, that is a little too elaborate, too detailed, and too advanced because in NP course, the instructor gets enormous amount of time and play. Okay. Uh, so that much may not be uh, necessary for you, but those interested can always um, have a look at it in the background. Okay, that's for you. Now, I'm not uh, bothering about giving you the precise link for that. And for that matter, 
I am not even telling you that you must do this or you should do this. That is up to you for your interest. It is known that his lectures are free. So if you are interested, you can if you look for it in the internet with the name Malik and Enpitel, you are quite likely to hit upon this particular thing. And then there are other online resources also for material to learn. There is no doubt. Okay. Now, the subject matter of this course can be briefly discussed as a qualitative discussion, qualitative description of the course subject matter as mechanisms and machines. Okay. So, mechanisms are supposed to be assemblages of different rigid bodies, digital or flexible bodies. For that matter, in this course, we mostly stay limited to rigid bodies. Flexible bodies enter into picture. Rarely. Okay, but once in a while it does. Okay. With special additions to the main foundation. So mechanisms are assemblies to primarily transmit motion. Machines, on the other hand, are artifacts to or assemblages of links or bodies to transfer motion and force. Transfer and transform. Transfer means from one point to another. Transform means from one form to the other. So this is the mechanisms is related mostly to kinematics. There is an A missing here that has been figured. Okay, I'll tell it before uploading the file. And machines are typically related to dynamics, where okay? motion and force both are of importance. Basically, power. And whether you study mechanisms or machines, there are two aspects of the study. One is analysis, the other is synthesis. Analysis means that you have the system, mechanism or machine, whatever it is. The same thing. When the focus is on transmission of motion, then it is typically referred to as mechanism. When the transmission of force is of more importance, then it is referred to as machines. But the thing can be the same. So, so in the case of analysis, you have the system, you have the thing, and you try to find out how it would behave. That is analysis. On the other hand, in the case of synthesis, the problem is just the reverse. You want a system which should behave in a particular manner. And given the manner in which it is supposed to behave, you can design. So synthesis is essentially designed. Okay. Now, I will mostly give pre-recorded lectures online in the movie portal. Now, discussion hours, Monday, Thursday, are live. Now, it is possible that we utilize one of these slots for discussion on theory and the other on that. Since theory lectures will come continuously, roughly three in a week, okay, we will need one session every week for the discussion, clarification of theory aspects, but the lab is not so free. Okay, so some of the weeks there may not be any need to assemble for the lab session. We will work it out. So this first Thursday of this particular week. We may need to discuss this particular research. Okay. So these are the topics of the course overview and introduction. This is actually quite big. Okay. Most of the basics. It will take at most seven lectures. Then kinematic analysis, which is also quite big. That may take another seven lectures, making the cumulative number of lectures up to this point as 14. 
at most. Then dimensional synthesis. I'll cover very little of it. Okay. And then introduction to spatial mechanisms, if possible. I'll give one. And this one lecture may be given here or may be given at the end of the semester, towards the end of the semester. Okay. Either way, it is possible. Most probably it will be given at the end of the semester. Now, after the or just before the mid-sem exam period, this topic may start, which is dynamic force and motion analysis, then balancing. Now, balancing depends on this, and dynamic depends on the kinematics done here. Okay. Then, cams and gears. Okay. So, this will be typical order, except for this one, which may change its order. Okay. So, in the round, it comes as at most 37 lectures, but actually it may be a total of 35 lectures or perhaps a little less. Now, practice. There are six lab experiments at present, mostly in the demo, demo because it is an online. Now, you will be required to go through the lab videos, which we will upload in the movie portal. And then participate in live session to clarify issues. Analysis of this may be noted by the peers. And then during the demo, the experiments that are conducted for that whatever data are important, then the data collection will be shown to you in the video, and the data also will be visible to you on the screen in the video. So using that data, you are to prepare the lab reports that is whatever post-processing is asked for in the lab manual. Now man, this is another important thing. So this lab manual I will upload in the MOOCIT portal. So from that you will get what are the things that you need to do in the each in each of the lab experiments. Now, rather than actual hands-on experience for you in the actual physical lab, the online video mode will do only one thing. That is, in the earlier normal case, you would be collecting the data on your own that would be your own data by conducting the experiments on your own. In the present case, the experiments will be conducted by somebody else, that is Mr. Tupati, typically, and you will be seeing it. That is, the data collection, the conduct of the experiment and the collection of data will be done for you by him. And that data will be made available to you. After that, the post processing that you do is as usual as the manual says. And then the lab report, earlier people used to submit lab reports on paper by hand. Now we will submit it online. Now, I, as I told you, the textbook is a must, and every student must have a personal copy. You must have access to the book. Because sometimes it may be, I mean, not only for studying, of course, studying is most important. Okay, but at times there may be actually reference to page number, question number of that book. And you must have a geometry box. The instrument box of this type, okay, in which uh, you have pencil, you have divider. You have a compass. Can you see the compass? Okay. You have a compass. So these things, protector, and so on. So you must have a geometry box, which you will need to use quite often. Okay. Because many of the exercises will require practical work. 
which you will need to draw on do on paper and then scan them and take the and submit all that. Now, something regarding scanning. The diagrams that you make with the geometry box are typically made in pencil. But when you scan it, then sometimes the scans are very, very fake. And it is quite often impossible to go through that and understand it. Okay. So be careful of one thing that after you after you make the diagram on paper with pencil, you must to a good extent ink that. But it, and that is not very difficult. I mean, you can take your normal pen and darken the important lines and curves a little nicely so that in the scan it is not lost. And try to use a good scanning applications so that the viewer finally, the final viewer can make sense of it. Last year, from many of the diagrams of the students, it became very difficult to figure out what is really the thing that the student has done. And this time, I am giving you prior warning that such things happen. So the responsibility this time will be yours completely. Well, last time also the responsibility was the students only. If I cannot figure out what the student has done, then uh, I really don't know where they get. The marks from. Okay. Okay, so, inking the diagram is something which you must keep in mind before you scan. And after you scan, you should see how the scan has come. Okay. And uh, this is something which you know by now. So, further points of protocol for doubt clearance and discussion. In MOOCIT portal itself, there is a beautiful discussion forum thing. Okay. So do not send separate emails on it. Whatever is your doubt, you put in the discussion forum. Because of two reasons, that keeps all the discussion in one place together, rather than scattered in some 24 emails. And besides, whatever is a question that has come to your mind, that may be a question in the mind of some other students also. In fact, many of them. Okay. So therefore, whatever questions come up and whatever answers are given to them, all the students of the course should be privy to. Even if the question came to your mind only, your classmates uh, should be aware that yes, this is an important question. And I also should uh, have thought of it. Now as the question has been asked, let me see what is answered here. On the other hand, he might know the answer. No, so he might give the answer. So, as it happens in the normal class, if you ask the doubt, it is possible that the instructor tells anybody else can answer that question, and then somebody else. So that kind of a that kind of an interaction we will simulate here. So for that, what do we do? That if a student opens any topic, any question any doubt, any issue, then first three hours will be exclusively for other students to clarify a comment or complaint. Mm -hmm. Like some student says that this is uh, in my opinion wrong because of such and such a If another student knows better, he says no, 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 this is right because of such and such a So that is counter. Mm -hmm. In some case, a student asks for a, asks a simple question, straightforward question, which is clear as a question. 
then there is a student answers. Or in, I mean, extends the question. That is also possible. So during these first three hours, instructor, that is myself, and TAs will remain there. And next three hours will be open to TAs as well as school. I remain there. Okay. And after that, if needed, I might enter into the picture. And during after the first six hours, three plus three, the question will be open for all. And then anybody can comment on it after or make whatever discussion of I expect that in the first six hours itself, most of the questions will get killed. Okay. We will be probably done away by other students and PAs. So sometimes it happens that I land at a later time, later point, only to rubber stamp one of the answers given by one student, but at least that yes, it is better. Or make some slight modifications. Now, over and above this discussion forum, in which we can hopefully resolve most issues, we will try to have a discussion meeting on Zoom on Monday and or Thursday during the standard period when we have the time. For that, I will typically, I or Vichal will typically frame a Zoom link and uh, communicate to you, either through the protocol, the portal, or through the course email. So this can be used to tackle leftover issues over the week. So that may take advantage of the actual conversation, direct interaction, and sometimes possibly uh, whatever board work we can do. Okay. Apparently we can do some board work by using whiteboard on Zoom. Now I say try because in the previous online semesters I had a tough time with my wife. This time I have connected this computer through which I am giving you the lecture um, to cable itself. So I am hoping that this time the Wi-Fi connection, not Wi-Fi, this time the internet connection will be better. I'm hoping. Let us see how it works. Now, this is important. With almost every lecture, I'm likely to post a mini assignment, okay? which will be due in a week. Now, this a week is strictly a week. That means seven into 24 hours. Irrespective of weekends, holidays coming in. So that is a week, actually. Fine. And now, here I have a complaint and I want you to read this. I mean, the complaint is not against you, the complaint is against uh, some students. Okay, some bad, some bad. If the deadline happens to be at a particular hour, then many students miss that deadline and then give excuses that that day during that time I had this difficulty, this problem, my internet was not working and uh, mm, uh, there was a lot of uh, disturbance in my area. All this is actually very excuse because if you had got several days to work on it, what was the need? to wait for the last minute of the last hour of the last day. So as I tell you that it is a week, seven days, on your own, set your own alarm for six days. Okay. Try to finish your work and submit one day in advance. Okay. Now, the day that you spend Earlier, that day you will get back at your hand for doing other things. Later. So you don't lose anything. I'm not asking you to do more work. But you plan to submit one day before. And after submission, don't bother about it. After you submit, then don't think of, oh, I could make another modification to it. I could improve it a little and get 
one and a half marks more, don't get into it. What you do once, you do once. If you now know better, that's great. Okay, what you know is your value addition. The submission that you make based on that, the marks that you get, that may go a very little bit into your grade, which will be very, very irrelevant within a few years. Okay? What you know, what you have learned, what you have understood, that will stay with you for a few years. So, and this time I'm going to be quite strict with the, these things. So, take care that you submit well within time. You target full 24 hours in advance, and then even if eight hours in advance, you can actually do it. That's a great mark. Okay? So, with great margin, submit your assignments, then you will feel more relaxed, happier. Now, even with all these things, it may happen that um, you miss a bit. For whatever reason. Okay. And then you will say, okay, fine, I missed my deadline. It's my fault. Maybe put some penalty that you think proper. But please evaluate it so that I get some marks. And also, full evaluation, I figure out what were my mistakes, or how good is my work, fine, whatever. So in that case, the MOOCIT will not accept it anymore, the late submission. And if you send the submission, if you send the assignment through email to me, I am promising you, I will immediately delete it. Because if assignments keep, assignment submissions keep piling on in my mailbox, I cannot sustain it. Rather than taking the risk of forgetting, trying to remember, and then not succeeding, I will certainly not remember. Okay. And to ensure that I do not linger on the uneasy feeling that what submissions I might have forgotten, I am telling you very clearly anything of that sort, if comes to email to me. I will summarily delete it because that is the only sensible course of action I can do. Otherwise, with the things that I have to handle, I cannot go through hundreds and hundreds of mails streaming to my mailbox. Vital is more energetic and uh, young and hopefully much more capable than me. So, all those communications of um, out of the way exceptional nature, he will make to each other. He will take care of these things. I mean, to whatever extent those things deserve to be taken care of. Okay? So, he will know the combination. If he has a, any confusion, then he will discuss it. Okay? So, I'm generalizing all these administrative things from you to all of us, that is myself and the other PAs, to this one point mm -hmm. that will keep all the things in one place. So there will be no trouble of confusing with which PA you need to operate and so on. So if Mitchell thinks that the matter needs to be brought to my attention, he will do that. If he thinks that he has to bring it to the attention of one of the peers, Yamshek or Sujan or Ronald, he will do that. He will know his business. Okay. Oh, so I should also discuss with you what is the grading scheme, grading plan. Okay. So assignments, as I, as I told you, with every lecture, I will post one mini assignment, maybe two problems kind. And therefore, the number of assignments will be many, 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 many assignments. Okay. So little problem sets, two problems or three problems kind of thing. 
and they will not take you uh, more than let's say two hours at most or one and a half hours some cases you may settle the whole thing in one hour if you have studied earlier properly in order to do that assignment if you start studying then that study time will get it so this will be the major chunk of credits that you are working at during the course over the years so i am keeping 300 marks for that out of 500 there will be no mid sem exam and end sem exam also in that stiff protocol of three hours kind of thing i will not conduct because online that is very stressful for everybody last two uh, semesters we had a very bad time rather in view of end sem exam during the last week of the course itself okay towards the end of that last week i will upload a small problem course. for doing which you may need something like three hours of this okay but i will give you a time duration of full 24 hours whenever you want to use your three hours so you can use your three hours in the beginning of those 24 hour period or in the middle or towards the end those who do it towards the end will have more tension that's a different thing okay so that means in principle you can spend 21 hours 22 hours also okay please yourself if you want to waste your time like that but the actual time that should be taken in that thing is 25 hours. Now, what is the separation? What is the difference between the assignments and this problem set? Except that the assignment is mini and uh, the problem set at the end is maxi, okay, that is large, mega. Okay. So, apart from the difference that this is mini and this is mega, there is another big difference. Regarding assignments in the discussion forum or in the discussion session, live discussion session, you may ask, are we supposed to do this or are we supposed to do that? Or I could not figure out what is this problem. I could not figure out what is to be done and how it is to be done. Regarding assignments in the forums or live discussion session, you can ask for clarifications and someone will try to give you the answer. Either some other classmate of yours, or the TAs, or myself. Regarding this, but then don't make silent phone calls to somebody or WhatsApp messages to a friend. Don't do that. You don't have to do that. Regarding assignments, you open the question in the forum. What the hell we are supposed to do with this man? I can't figure it out. So somebody else will be like, hey, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's perfectly all right. Because assignments come during the phase of learning. Okay. So though you get some credit out of it in terms of evaluation, but the primary focus of assignments is learning. Okay. However, in the ancient problem set, no discussion, no clarification. Don't make silent communication with some friend and don't ask in the session for either during those 24 hours and even if you ask nobody is going to answer nobody else should answer none of your friends classmates should answer during that period and PS also should not answer I will do not even clarification if you don't understand what the problem wants you to do, that is completely your problem at this stage. Okay? During assignments, if you don't understand what is supposed to be done, that is my problem. Okay? So that has to be clear because then you are done. By this time, by the time of the final 24 hour deadline problem set, you are supposed to have learned. And at that stage also, if you don't understand what the problem 
really want you to do that is not my expectation. Okay? That is should pure evaluation. Now, if by chance you think that the problem statement, question set statement in that is has mistakes, in your response, in your solution, you write that that it is wrong. Okay. And if I then find that it is very really wrong, then I will give you the credit for it. Fine. So this ensemble problem set will carry one copy. You see, less than half of the assignment that you have earned through the assignment. Experimental study lab will earn you 50 marks maximum. Over and above that, you have an optional task that you may do if you like, if you have time, or may not bother. Okay? If you are busy. Now, this optional task is a program implementation of any of the methods taught in the course over several pieces of data, with which you can get a lot of output. And because it is program, okay, that much calculation, that much computation, a human being cannot really practically do, but the computer can do it if you have made the correct program. And then you can get a lot of data and uh, you can make plots on the, with them and then real, that is real study, real analysis, okay, of the uh, mechanisms and machines. So, on whichever topic you want to do that programming implementation, you can mention to the to us, to our team, to Vitzel, and then we will work out the typical uh, time when time steps when you can make the proposal when you can submit it and so on. Typically, this thing, final submission of this thing, should be a little more than one week before the semester classes end. That is. If the semester classes are over 12 weeks, then they should be submitted during the 11th week. Okay. In the last, I mean, that is, at the, I mean, at the maximum. And through this, you can get up to 50 marks. Okay. So if the task is very little and you have done a heavy job, then it will be less. If the task is very little and even if you have done a great job, then it, will, then it will still not be up to 50, but a good substantial task done, executed well, may earn up to 50 marks, which is 10% of the course. However, no student needs to feel the threat of other students acquiring 50 marks bonus in lieu of a task which he himself doesn't want to do because he doesn't want to waste so much of extra time. He thinks it is wasted or spend while he use bad words. Okay. So he cannot afford that much time. So he says, nah, hey, my bonus, my bonus. But then somebody else is getting the bonus. So he should not be threatened by it. Because whenever I announce a bonus credit, my way of handling the bonus credit ensures that the student who gets that bonus may get an advantage, but another student who doesn't opt for that bonus has got no disadvantage. Okay? The way to do that is very simple. At the end of the semester, collating all the credits from everything, assignments, labs, Problem set, tension, exam, 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 whatever it is. Okay. When I start making the final grades, I make the grades in two rounds. In the first round, I do not consider this bonus marks. On the compulsory parts, whatever somebody has got, based on that, I make the full grade list A, B, C, D, whatever it is. After that is made, then I look at who got what bonus. And by adding the bonus, 
it may happen that someone goes from C to B, someone goes from B to A, and so on, but no grades go down because the grade cutoffs are already decided. The cutoffs become decided by the first round of exercise, the second round of exercise, the adding of bonus marks that may push some grades up, but it pushes no grade down. Okay. It may happen also that you opted for the bonus. Out of 50, you got a good marks in the bonus, but your grade did not equal. That also is possible. Okay. Because without the bonus, possibly in you were in the lower rung of B, and with the bonus added, you come up to a higher rung of B. But a fat lot of good that does you if it does not make you cross from B to A. What is the real advantage is the experience, the fun, and the learning that you get through this particular experience. Over and above that, if you get a great change, you may not know that because of this reason, your grade has got changed. Okay, you may not know it. That is a reward which you get silently. On the other hand, if your grade does not get pushed up because of that, because of the shift from lower rung of a grade to uh, the higher rung of that same grade itself, then also you don't know whether it changed your grade or not. But we take care of it. So you don't have to worry. So you need to enjoy the work and whatever benefit out of it comes to you in terms of pay will not be known to you. So you see, I have but two eyes which work. Okay. So what task of mine, what good work of mine have given me these two eyes, I don't know. And it doesn't matter to me. I have just got the blessings of two working eyes, same with you, I hope. Okay? So, you need not bother about it, you do your own. So, if you want to do it, if you have the time, you do it. And if you do not have the time, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But don't get scared that because others will do it, they will have an advantage and you will have a disadvantage. Nobody will have a disadvantage because others are doing the best. Be very clear. So with this, I stop here and some of the things I will upload at the proper places in the market portal and make note of that in the discussion portal. Okay. Most of the free time discussion will take place through the discussion.